Welcome back to Third Phase of Moon. Blake Cousins, we've got a special report for you tonight. We're looking at the phenomenon right now, something captured in the sky, multiple videos in this episode. So buckle up everybody, let's get rolling right now. What are we looking at? A chemtrail, contrail, whatever you call it. It's a moment in time, you don't see this every day. Something happened in the sky, it was captured on video. We see this tail, this trail leaving casted shadow above the cloud layer including the sun at the perfect moment to highlight it is there something et in nature or is this something natural brent yeah it's pretty curious uh, weather phenomenon we're looking at here it looks like a tear in the sky and here's another one that just popped up on our feed again people might look at these weather phenomena that happen around the world and people might misidentify these uh, phenomenon as ufos it happens all the time this is a great capture though we love anything that transports us to something that we've never seen before and this is what we're looking at right here great capture yeah, I'm speculating here that this could be kind of a prism effect. There might be a little slight sprinkle and under the perfect uh, circumstances, you could get this light phenomenon. But this is what's crazy right here. We're looking at stuff that is kind of unbelievable. Some kind of uh, spirit in the sky. It sounds like a song. It is a song, but we're looking at it. We're getting a close up look at it. We could see it resemble like a cross or a humanoid the arms spread out you have this apparition up in there and right now the camera person who shot this was wondering what the heck is it and i'm so glad that he actually captured this and we're looking at it right now for the world to see the phenomenon it's real there's no cgi here this is straight up legitimate footage the question again is uh, what's causing this phenomenon is it something from another uh, dimension, uh, some people might speculate. Uh, I'm not leaning towards that, but you just never know where these uh, sightings come in and out of and how people are just lucky enough to be in the right place at the right time. Uh, this episode's full of light phenomenon. Uh, we've got another one, but Brent, quickly, what's your take on this? Yeah, we're going on to the next video in just a second. I'm saying this is legit. Great capture. We don't know what it is. It could be a weather phenomenon, but man, again, we got the best UFOs on the planet just coming in straight. And here's another one that just came in and take a look at this. People are saying that this looks like a, a portal that's opening up over the sea. Look at it, Brent. It's pulsating and it has this circular centrifugal action to it right now we're looking at it. it's on the horizon it's off at a distance this thing in my opinion is at least i don't know a football field sized uh event here Th this thing is again off at the horizon so it could even be larger than this uh, some people are speculating that this could be a spacex um, malfunction or something we don't see uh, this indicated at the moment but maybe we'll find out tomorrow we're, we're putting it out there uh, trying to get answers in regards uh, to this capture and again this spiral effect this light phenomenon uh, on the horizon and again th these people are capturing this from a boat it is a little shaky the video but they they captured something that i can't explain at this moment brent yeah you could just see it warping it's pulsating and creating this like a nice prism plasma blue light it does uh, look similar to spacex but then again why is it happening so low uh right over the ocean usually it's high up unless it's captured at such a distance it's right there at the horizon of the vantage point of the curvature of the earth but again this is very inter interesting stuff Absolutely. Now, let's get to this. Michael Schratt, along with Rudy Gardea, joined us here in Los Angeles. Some special guests in regards to disclosure. Rudy Gardea, the artist behind what we've been seeing on the world news, the disclosure has happened and Michael Schratt's brought it forth with the historic evidence. And we're going to be going over some of that today. And we also have Paula Asteria from Paula's Odysseys. Hi. Uh, she's got some questions for Rudy in regards to some of the history that we're going to be going over. So there's something you want to share with us that kind of the world hasn't discussed. Mm, well, if you do, take it back to the original historical record. Now, we know that the retrieval operation began the night of the 7th of July, 1947. And then in the morning of July 8th of 1947, things really started kicking in. So what we want to do and to my knowledge, this hasn't been done before, so it will be a first. We're, we're not looking for 
absolute perfection here. So it can be a little rough. What we want to do is maintain historical accuracy, but we still want to be able to tell the story. So what we want to do is we're going to have the 18 wheeler tractor trailer low boy up on the Foster Ranch and we're going to have a Jeep nearby it. We're going to have the 13 foot wide egg shaped craft with a dome on it. There's a hull breach on the side and then we'll have a crane that came in from Roswell. This is not talked about. Almost no one knows this that an actual civilian crane came in from Roswell that aided in the retrieval operation. So we'll have the crane picking up the egg shaped craft with a netting right next to the low boy tractor trailer. I've got all the reference works here and we can go over the material. All right, before we get to that, you know, Rudy has um, been working with Michael Schratt for some time now, going over these recreations and getting it so we can see it as a visual. And you're also speaking with the whistleblowers as of recently. Um, what was your take when uh, you saw your artwork up on uh, Fox News <laughs> in regards to this? <laughs> I was sitting at home and uh, it was in the afternoon and a friend of mine texted me and then I looked and says, you're on Fox News. And I said, what? And uh, I called her up and she's uh, the marketing director at our high school. And she said, I'm watching it in Palm Springs right now. Your artwork is on Jesse Waters. And so I was shocked and, and all of a sudden people started to chime in and I was surprised as anybody. It's fun, it's exciting, exciting. Absolutely uh, exciting times. What's crazy too is that you know, there is this new disclosure that's happening and these new whistleblowers. It's kind of the, the new thing right now. For some reason, this month has been kind of on high octane. And what are we going to get into here? It's kind of like some stuff that has been in the past from Roswell, but again, never kind of before heard kind of materials. And Correct. we're going to have Rudy Gardea being uh, doing an artistic representation in real time. In real time. So uh, you're kind of joining us on this uh, process of how Michael and Rudy work together to bring you the latest uh, visuals from these historical files. So, That's correct. so let's That's uh, roll it out. Okay, so we do have the master timeline here and I'm going to move this over. Uh, <clears throat> so this is going to be late afternoon evening, July 7th, 1947, mentions this civilian crane being on the scene here and we can also pull up all of our reference material all of our reference works here we've got the drawings so this is going to be your scenery here that is the location of where the craft came down here is our map that shows you where this actually took place and i've got the full color rendering by thomas bogan so what we're going to have is the 18 wheeler tractor trailer low boy over here this is gonna be your 13 foot wide egg shaped craft with the dome. And I've picked out a period correct crane and that's what we're going to use for our crane. There is your crane right there. Okay. You can see the truck part there. There's the lift that, that will have a cable coming down to a netting and the netting will be under here with the hull breach. Okay. So the process that we're doing right now is just a thumbnail ideation process yes. where we're just spinning it out. We're trying to lay it out to find out if we're gonna get the balance, emphasis, rhythm and unity we're looking for. And uh, once we agree upon a composition, then we go forward with the final rendering. So yeah. this is a preliminary ideation process, but it's fun. <laughs> okay, so the landscape, okay, diagonal, so that we can get some uh, action incorporated because it's static unless you do that. Let's go and get, now this crash, we can go and put the crash as the main emphasis focal point right here. And a hull breach and it's this is this is the size in. of a Volkswagen that's it it's 13 feet across okay and it's an egg-shaped craft with a dome and there were actually extraterrestrial bodies that yeah, were there, were, there were there were five bodies recovered and one was still alive he made it till April of 1948 oh my gosh and this is the thing that always blows me away about working with Michael is that I learned so much and hear these stories and just it's unbelievable okay so now the crane with the netting, right? The crane, yep. So this is gonna be your crane right here. Okay. This will be parked right next to the low boy trailer. Okay, so do we want this in the process of lifting it yes, up? Yes, we want we want the, the craft uh, suspended off the ground right next to the low boy trailer. Okay. As they're getting ready to low it, uh, bring it right on there. Okay. That's what we wanna do. All right, let's yep. go to a new It's not one. even gonna be on the ground. This is already gonna be in the netting, ready to load up. Okay, so we'll go for You don't even need to show bodies. All right, we'll go vertical composition on this yes. because it's a crane with the length of it, it's a better space. Correct. Okay, let's see. So, 
horizon line will be down here. We'll have, the, let's see, the craft will be here. The low boy will be over here, roughed out. Mm -hmm. What era is that truck? Is this the 1940s, World War well, II? Well, this is 1947 date, so the truck would be early 40s, okay. mid 40s, somewhere in there. This is period correct though, so we've done the legwork. Okay. So does it feel like you're kind of going back in time, uh, <laughs> Michael, when you're doing this, like at the scene of the crime? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. We make it come alive through these drawings and illustrations. That's what it's all about. So how long does it really take you to do one of these drawings? I know you've done so many, Rudy. Oh, it depends, yeah. See, like on this, we're just roughing it out. We come up with something so that we can discuss how everything is laid out, and then I'll go home and I'll spend more time on getting a more final finished piece. Whoops. But there's something to be said about uh, these preliminary drawings because there's a lot of energy in, in this and it's just a different kind of a feel. It's, um, it's a great, great experience to be working doing this stuff. Like I said, I'm learning so much about this whole endeavor, which I never thought I'd be into about two years ago when I met Mr. Shratt. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I appreciate the opportunity. It's been really great to learn. I mean, I worked in the military. I've worked as a subcontractor for Boeing and uh, Northrop Grumman. And I've seen some of the technology that they've had. And I thought that they were putting it online because it was so new and modern looking. Find out, nope, it's been out for 25 years. It's being retired and having my jaw hit the ground. And some of the stuff I talked, I saw, and that I was preparing for presentations for the Joint Chiefs, you can't really, you know, fathom what what you're seeing technological wise in front of your eyes. Yeah, that's it. Okay, that's it. You got it. So, Michael, what's your gut feeling? You said there mm -hmm. are five. Uh, the five bodies were recovered, and, yes. and one alive. One was still alive. Yes. Mm -hmm. And. The, your gut feeling, are these E.T. in nature or, you know, something... E.T. E. E. in nature. You're thinking they're E.T. E. in nature? E.T. in nature. E.T. in nature. Yep. Now, do we want to try to hit scale because we know that this thing fit on here, so this would be smaller to mm -hmm. fit on the here. So I'm right. thinking this should be scaled down a bit because it's only the size of a Volkswagen. That's it. Right. Yep. Your gut feeling, are these E.T. in nature or, you know, something... E.T. E. in nature. You're thinking they're E.T. E. in nature. E.T. in nature. E.T. in nature. Yep. Now, do we want to try to hit scale because we know that this thing fit on here, so this would be smaller to mm -hmm. fit on the here. So I'm right. thinking this should be scaled down a bit because it's only the size of a Volkswagen. That's it. Right. Yep. Okay. I so would go a little bit smaller on the craft the itself. Wheel here, what do you figure a wheel is on a semi-truck like that? About mm. three foot? That's probably close, so yeah. So three, and this is levitated above, it's slightly out, three, six, nine. How long is that Volkswagen? 13 feet across. So that's about its scale. This is often a distance. So the way I'm doing well, it Well, it should be close to this though. These should be very close to each other because they're getting ready to, unless you want to show it that they're, they're bringing it over there. That's yeah. Right. Okay. That's fine too. We can do that. That's yeah. that's fine. That works. Because now here's the thing. Is good. That I like how you it, lead it, so that's good. Right. That's well, good. it's you know it's one of those things where, and this is the discussion we have, which is always really great. Okay. Because what we do with this is, if I put this at scale, you're going to get this clutter that's going to be confusing. Okay. Putting the foreground, discernible, midground, and background. Good. 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 Depth of okay. Good. And it tells, I think it tells a better story. Good. And then it gives us an opportunity perhaps to get some of that vegetation, but that we don't have vegetation. No, there's no trees. How about some rolling hills? Um, pretty much flat, okay. pretty much flat. This is what you want to shoot for right here. Gotcha. You can see, that's, that's it. That's pretty flat. Okay. That's it. <laughs> All right. That's your bogey. So are we actually drawing off of like a craft that you know of, that you're aware of? Uh, this. For the 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 yeah. detail information for this particular scene was vetted and approved by Don Schmidt. So we know from Don that it was a 13 foot wide egg shaped craft with a dome and a hull breach. And so that's where we're basing it from. And this was supposedly all taken to Wright Patterson Air Force Base. Well, it was originally okay. brought to Hangar P3 Building 84 at Roswell Army Airfield. And then the body flights began from that point and uh, yes, eventually probably ended up at Wright Field, Dayton, Ohio. Are you going to draw the alien bodies too? You don't need to do that, but <laughs> yeah. But there, there were aliens recovered. Correct, correct, right. correct. 
they yeah. would have been the first thing that would have been picked up yeah. though yes this probably the yeah this the end, yes right? correct is that the um the sighting of the woman that um was able to gain access into the interior more of the pentagon as you saw the green pickled <laughs> alien in the jar <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, that was 52, so technically it could have been, but I don't know if what she saw was from Roswell. Don't know that. Well, what they said was that there were three bodies, right? And then two of them were dead and one was kept alive somehow? One was, one was kept alive and seen at Wright Field, Dayton, Ohio, uh, 1947, um, April 1948. Yep. What were some of the eyewitnesses? Because obviously they came forward. They they didn't hold it to themselves. There were whistleblowers back then. Oh, sure, yeah. Uh, Pappy Henderson told his wife, Sappho, that he was the gentleman who flew the bodies in the C-54, or at least one body, to Wright Field, Dayton, Ohio, directly to Wright Field. So we have his testimony. We have the testimony of the uh, military personnel who crisscrossed the debris field for three days and then finished up with industrial vacuum cleaners all over a weather balloon. So we've got that. We've got testimony from the wives of the uh, military personnel who loaded the bodies into the crate and their uniforms smelled so bad they had to burn their uniforms. This is all over a weather balloon now. Mm. So yeah, there's, there's people who have come forward to verify the, the account. So the smell on their uniforms were because of uh, because Because the, the bodies? bodies were decomposing from the night of the 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, the morning of the 8th. They were already laying out there. Critters were going after them. So by the time the military got involved, these things were in bad shape. They were in bad shape. So you could see how that seems that checks out. Did you talk to any of the people, like um, some of the medical unit that uh, was working on the living um, alien that survived? Uh, any kind I, of treatment? I spoke what kind to of treatment the was given. Uh, I spoke to the son of uh, Mac Black Magruder, and uh, he was he was gracious enough to give me all his notes that he had written down with his father, who saw the actual survivor. We do have the survivor drawing here from Rudy, and maybe we could just review that really quickly. So this is, uh, this is the survivor. This is what he looked like. This is what it looked like. Uh, they were at Montgomery Field, and this is April 1948. A team of the graduating class were flown on an emergency trip to Wright Field, Dayton, Ohio. They were brought into a briefing room where there were two people that showed them debris from the Roswell crash retrieval operation. So you can see it appears that the United States government is just testing the waters with these test balloons. They want to know if our top military pilots can handle this new reality. So once this debris was passed around, all that debris was put back in a box. Then they were led down a hallway. They made a left-hand turn into a room that had one-way window, one-way mirror. And there is where Black Mac Magruder and his graduating pilot saw the survivor. He was described as squiggly. Other people called him, he, he looked like Casper the Ghost. Uh, oversized head, oversized eyes, slit for a mouth, minute nose. Uh, multiple reports of a one-piece tight-fitting flight suit. And according to Mac Black Magruder, he, he was alive, but they killed it with some type of experimentation. Purposely or? Probably not purposely, but they were probably performing some type of experiment or something, but he, he died uh, after April 1948. And best to your knowledge, where are these bodies? <laughs> they could be at the Blue Room. They could be at the Blue Room in Wright-Patterson. Now, don't know that for sure, but all roads lead to the Blue Room. So how's the art coming on there, Rudy? You liking um, what you've seen? I'm happy with the decision yeah. you made, yeah. <laughs> I am too, it looks great. Yeah, it's always good to get that foreground, midground, and background so you can yep. push that depth of field. I'm gonna drop an armature of a guy right here. Okay. Gotta get the basic uh, wireframe kind of indicated in there and then I'll build from that. Contraposto. <laughs> so silly. Yep. So the idea of like, usually as an artist, a lot of it comes out of an artist's head and then create something original, but this is based on like testimony eyewitness. Correct, which correct. Is, it's almost evidence that would be upheld in a court to a point. 
was if there were no photographs or film taken of the event. This is the best we got here. So just to go over the timeline here, so this is the master timeline, July 7th, 1947, late afternoon evening, military arrives at the impact site and discovers a strange egg-shaped craft with a hull breach on the side. Two dead alien corpses are recovered badly decomposed and wearing tight-fitting silver-colored flight suits. One entity was discovered still alive. Special note, Two additional dead alien corpses, ET corpses, were discovered approximately two and a half miles west of the impact site. Could you imagine what these uh, soldiers were thinking at the time? <laughs> it was definitely uh, challenging the reality, that's for sure. Do you think they were forced to sign non-disclosures? Uh, fear factor was a, a major role, absolutely. What do you mean fear factor? Threatening their families' well, lives or their Oh, oh their absolutely, lives? absolutely. Years later, a lot of these personnel, uh, you know, they were told never to talk about this. Uh, we will not only just kill you, but we'll kill your family and you'll be picking your bones out of the desert. Uh, these threats were made to civilians uh, and it changed the whole outlook. But here's the interesting part. The civilians got to the debris field and crash site before the military. So as we speak right now, this very minute, this very day, this very second, there is debris in civilian hands still in Roswell right now, right now. And if you have that debris, you know, contact <laughs> us right now. Right. Our email's in the description, yeah. so, you know, we'll do it right, don't worry. You really think somebody's got the debris? I absolutely do think so, yes. Mm -hmm. It's been handed down through generations through the family, but it is definitely the crown jewels. They bring no it doubt. out every New Year's Eve. Could and be, show yes. Show it to the family. Could and be. Let's play with the metal. We spoke to uh, Jesse Marcel Jr. We yeah. were the last interview him. I think he uh, wow. passed away like a week after our interview with him. And mm -hmm. you know, listening to him and his sister in regards to handling the medals and what right. they said about uh, their father, it was. It just seemed that they were really genuine. They're kids, mm -hmm. they, there was no agenda. No agenda, no. What do you think happened with all the evidence that was brought back to Dayton? Is it still there? Or, you know, like, do they still have um, the alien bodies? Well, certainly during the time frame, um, much of the debris was brought there. Uh, at, some of the bodies were, were absolutely brought there, but then it does appear that some of the material was farmed out to other locations. Um, Langley Air Force Base, uh, we know that there's material at MacDill Air Force Base. There's a library there where they have eight by 10 glossy black and white photographs. They've got motion picture film reels. And so it, it appears that the United States government they don't want to follow a single point failure operation. They want to spread their assets around the country. So if anything happens, they don't lose all their, their great prizes. So that appears to be the case. But early on, all roads lead to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. In, in your research with uh, crash and retrievals, have you ever seen an egg-shaped craft like this one before? Because I haven't seen this particular craft anywhere else. Mm, that, that appears to be something that comes up again and again, but as far as this one, uh, this would be one of the early egg-shaped craft. 1941 Cape Girardeau was more of a circular craft, saucer-shaped. So I'd say we've been rolling about 20 minutes and um, mm -hmm. this uh, rendering is just about wrapped up here, huh, Rudy? Mm -hmm. That's it. Just quick and, and just get it yep. out so that we have something that we can reference and discuss. Right. And then I go and I'll take, uh, I've got, like I said, I have an extensive uh, assemblage of models and mm -hmm. stuff that I get and I light and I photograph to make sure that we get the details right because if you work in the aviation industry I worked with an old World War II ace and he was 93 and I showed him my first airplane I was very pleased he looked at it and he says there's too many rivets <laughs> where is the uh, insignia on my cowling this is an F6 F3 I flew an F6 F5 the intake is all wrong I thought I had, you know, an amazing piece and he just destroyed me because of the details. So when you're working with aviation assets and military stuff, these guys really, really attach themselves to the equipment they were attached to. And if you don't get it right, or on the other hand, when you do get it right, they appreciate it a lot. Mm -hmm. What is this that's like holding up the 
craft from the crane. That's the lanyards, the, the lanyards that they use to hoist it up. And oh. that's connected to a bridle up here. So the crash, it was there for three to four days. And then the more than that, more than that. So when the military first arrived, how long did it take for them to logistic set up these logistics? Well, it seems like they were almost prepared we, to. we know that they got there the night of the seventh. So it was, they had floodlights completely lighting up the entire area. That was confirmed by multiple witnesses. So the operation would be the night of the 7th, the 8th, and then on the 9th, it was going down Roswell Main Street to Hangar P3 Building 84. So it only took them a day and a half. So that proves so, there was a crash retrieval program already uh, predating this event. That well, Cape Girardeau was long before yeah. this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So these guys obviously had had this drill set up for more of these kind of uh, crash retrievals. Uh, they had a little bit of experience, but it was chaotic some scene though, were, for sure. Yeah, some of them were kind of newbies to it, for the, but. And there's no 509th bomb group members left anymore. So in the eyes of the government, it's cover up complete, but it's drawings like this from Rudy that will keep this alive. We will not let them get away with sweeping this under the carpet. We won't do it. And he's just uh, doing some quick uh, framing up here of the yep. completed render. I think that indicates. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Boom. That's it. Very nice, Rudy. Thank you. Well, that's how it's done, that's right? How that's do how we do it. You guys do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yep. you've got a. Uh, Blue Room Media, Michael Schratt with uh, his YouTube channel, and um, mm -hmm. he's going to be posting up uh, more up there yeah. soon. So yep. don't forget to check that out. And then Rudy Gardea, how, how do people get in touch with you? Do we have an email that we're going to share in the description? Sure, sure. Rudy Gardea Art on uh, Instagram, and you can message me there, or you can go to my uh, website, RudyGardeaArt.com. I appreciate you coming out and uh, doing this with us. It's a blast um, meeting you and uh, Michael and. Uh, Paula, how does everybody get in touch with you? Uh, you can follow me on YouTube with Paula's Odyssey. Or uh, just follow me on social media. I'm everywhere at Paula's area. <sighs> well, what a day um, going over this and talking some of the history of UFOs. It, it doesn't get much better than this. And, uh, you know, appreciate you guys joining us right here at Third Phase Moon. Be safe, everybody. Keep your eyes on the skies. We'll see you next time.